You're listening to the Voice of Russia, and we're talking about slut shaming. I'm Tom Spender. A trend known as slut shaming has emerged on the internet in recent years. Posting on social networking sites such as Facebook, Tumblr, or Twitter, teenage girls and sometimes boys humiliate other girls for the way they dress or look, which they say is sluttish. Sometimes these posts are accompanied by photos of the girl being targeted and attract scores of harsh comments, causing serious distress to the girl in question and leading to accusations of cyberbullying. There are cases in which slut shaming is said to have led to suicide. So, is slut shaming an understandable reaction against the excessive sexualization of young girls in Western culture, or is it a disturbing occurrence of girls propping up an age-old sexist order that seeks to control female sexuality? Joining me in the studio to discuss this are Julie Bindle, a freelance journalist and co-founder of the group Justice for Women, and Rhiannon Coslett, co-founder and editor of Vagenda magazine. And on the phone we have the anti-feminist blogger Judgy Bitch, and Soraya Shamali, a feminist writer and media critic. So let's start with anti-feminist blogger Judgy Bitch. How would you define slut shaming, and, and what is its purpose? Well, I think slut shaming is a product of a pushback against a culture that is sexualizing young girls at younger and younger ages. I mean, we have push-up bras and thong underwear for fourth graders. And this is creating an environment where young girls are expected to display and value themselves in terms of sexuality, and they're resisting that. They're saying, no, I don't think so. One of the images that you were talking about, the triptych images, Um, is a girl saying you don't, you open books, you don't open your legs. That's actually a really empowering message. Like you, you, there's more to you than just sexual availability, sexual desirability. These are really, really young girls. They're not ready for this. And they're pushing back against peers who are setting the bar way too high. Julie Bindle, what do you make of what judgy bitch is saying? Uh, Well, I disagree with it uh, almost in its entirety. I really wish that we had a movement which was shaming rapists, men who were abusive towards women and girls, and those that seek to police women's sexuality. And this isn't a new phenomenon. Uh, Not at all. The only thing new about this is the horrific uh, reclaiming of the the term slut, which can never, ever be good. It was never a word that was positive. It's totally man-made to to suit uh, misogynistic purposes, and it's never something that women should use in any celebratory uh, fashion at all. So I disagree with her, and what I think we should be doing um, is recognising that forever men have sought to police women's sexuality, whether we choose to be sexual or whether we choose not to be sexual. So it's nonsense as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Rhiannon Kostler, isn't there space in society for us to, you know, condemn and criminalise and work against sexual assault, but also uh, perhaps agree that there is an excessive sexualisation of of young women in society and that something should be done about it? I think it's problematic because if you start start analysing and monitoring the way that women jet dress um there's a kind of underlying message there that they are responsible for any abuse that they receive as a result you know not as a result but because men choose to rape and there's still this message that goes out which says if you wear a short skirt you deserve to be raped at some level i mean look at the police campaigns against anti-rape a lot of them do suggest that if you have too much to drink if you wear a short skirt then that's your fault you've got what's coming to you um i think what judgy bish bitch said about the comment um you know open books and not your legs i don't think that's an empowering comment at all why can't you open books and open your legs you know being sexually liberated isn't necessarily the opposite of you know being intelligent and educated and that message isn't something that young girls should be hearing soraya shamali there's nothing new slut shaming is as old as the bible um and you know we're talking about the word slut, and we're talking about people who shame women for the way they dress or the way they behave because they transgress, right? They don't follow the rules. They're not good girls. And that is one way of sexualizing girls and women. The other way of sexualizing them is to have this ridiculous ideal of purity. And they're both forms of sexualization. And so 
A, yes, it's not a new thing. B, the technology that we have um, uh, available today is technology. It can be put to good use or to to bad use. And so it's really more a reflection of culture than um, anything else. So when you get on, for example, Facebook, a a page called the 12-year-old slut meme, um, it would be nice if, if Facebook were consistent in its application of its guidelines and it created a culture where where that was not possible and where 200,000 people didn't comment on the photographs of girls used without their consent, but Facebook doesn't do that because it too is part of the culture. I, I think we're just at the point where we're becoming more aware and we're speaking more openly, raising issues related to sexuality, to rape, to abuse, to violence. And so now we can actually say the word slut on the radio or on the television, whereas you really couldn't do that before. Judgy Bitch, do you do slut shaming yourself? Um, in, in what context? Do I get on Facebook and call out other girls? Uh, absolutely not. Um, in response to the, to the previous commenters, the first thing I'd like to say is, as an atheist here, um, Slut shaming is not really a huge part of the Bible. It may be part of some subsects of Christianity. When the king of Pharisees brings an adulteress before Jesus and asks what should be done with her, the common punishment is to stone her to death. And what Jesus says is, let he among us who is without sin cast the first stone. So the oh, idea of like, painting you... Christianity as somehow responsible for slut-shaming, a long tradition of misogyny against women. And this is my second point. We're not talking about women. We're talking about 13, 12, 13, 14-year-old girls. These are not women. They are being thrust into a landscape that they are in no way prepared to deal with. They don't have adult supervision. They don't have parents saying not that's talking not appropriate. You can't that's go separate. out like that. You shouldn't be. You're sending signals that you don't understand. They have absolutely no supervision. There's this huge void in the culture. And guess who's stepping in? Their peers. Peers who do not want to live in a culture where 12-year-old girls wear push-up bras. They're pushing back against that and saying it's not okay. Julie Bindle, can't young girls decide what they want for themselves? Do you know something? We're sitting here, uh, there are four women in this debate, and what we're talking about is men's misogyny and patriarchy, male supremacy. And it's true, I mean, women are the only oppressed group in the entire world and culture that are required to love their oppressors, and that makes it very complicated, because it means that women constantly defend men and their behaviour and blame other women. What I'm talking about is women blaming other women and making women responsible for what men men have directed us to do and it is men unfortunately under patriarchy that direct our sexuality and this is what feminism is about to stop men telling us how we should behave sexually Rhiannon but Cosley. women have no agency they have no responsibility they have zero capacity to understand they're just mindless sheep who follow wait, like can, the I, can I make says? a distinction here I mean, wait can we just let judgy time. bitch say what she wants to say first and then we can respond to it Okay, th- this whole idea that women are victims who are in love with their oppressors denies women agency. It denies that women have any responsibility for their personal actions. It paints us as these ridiculous children. Who okay, judgy bitch, elections. but you are talking about children, aren't you? You say that the 12-year-olds and the 13-year-olds don't know what they're doing. Right, they're right in that territory between childhood and adulthood, and they need guidance to get through that period. You're listening to The Voice of Russia, and we're talking about slut-shaming. Tom, can I ask you a question, please? Because we're conflating two things here. Judgy Bitch is talking about the sexualization of young girls. That is not the same as slut-shaming. And that may seem obvious, but on the one hand, we have this sexualization of younger and younger girls. I think we all accept that that is happening. Slut-shaming regardless of who is doing it, whether it's other teenagers or not, is something separate, right? I mean, there are a million and one ways to approach this that does not rely on children enforcing the rules of the adults around them, because make no mistake, that is what teenage children do. Okay, so but parents, parents 
often tell their children how to behave or offer them guidance. That's what parents do, surely. Listen, I'm a parent of three teenage girls. My children, for example, knew very early on that they were not to call any other girl or woman a slut. They were not to judge them on their appearances. And that was direct language that my husband and I used. I don't think that's happening in most cases. Yeah, I because think most if women people, use that language, then they essentially send the message that it's okay for men to use that language that's too. That's what I think too. I think the minute that, that women sit around being snarky about how other women dress or how they look or how other teenage girls are dressing or behaving, then of course their sons and daughters are going to do the same thing. There's also something that we have to say about the slut walk movement, which I think has been really damaging and definitely misdirected. Um, Because if there's any type of action uh, to highlight how problematic men's violence towards women is, that men actually like and applaud, then we're not quite getting it right, because it should actually be threatening to them and make them feel uncomfortable. And when men were standing on the sidewalks of the slut marches, whether in Canada or in London or elsewhere, applauding, holding up placards saying, I love sluts, and and clapping at the women walking around in bras and knickers, then that obviously isn't something that is furthering the message that violence towards women and sexualization of young women is problematic. But it's also a total myth to suggest that we only recently have this sexualization right. of young girls. I was reading a feminist classic, The Feminist Mystique by Betty Friedan, uh, which was published 50 years ago uh, this year, where the, the opening pages highlight the list of problems that young women have faced, faced uh, in those days. And one of them was padded bras for 10-year-old girls. And this was 50 years ago. It's just that we know more about it now because we have MTV and the internet It's always been a problem. Look at child sexual abuse. Girls have always been sexualised by men. Rhiannon Coslett, surely if girls can wear what they want, why can't they say what they want as well? Um, I think, you know, in any civilised, polite society, um, people need to be aware of the consequences of their actions and the things that they say. And I, I mean, if you look at this trend, it has actually resulted in the deaths of some young women. Quite recently here in London, there's been a story about a 13-year-old girl who um, jumped from a balcony because a young boy who had footage of her performing a sexual act on his mobile phone refused to hand it over and was threatening to publicise it. So I think, actually, you know, there's there's freedom of speech and then there's, you know... Um, saying something that can be so horribly damaging that, you know, um, it's unjustifiable. And I think, you know, teenage girls, they're, they're just trying to find their way. They're, they're just experiencing puberty. And something like that can, 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 can mess you up for life. Judgy bitch, I, I want to kind of ask you the same question, because if you say that young girls don't know what they're doing when they dress, how can you also argue that they do know what they're doing when they engage in slut shaming? Um, I, I would say they absolutely know what they're doing, and the girls who dress like sluts know what they're doing to a certain extent, too. I mean, they are asking for attention. When you call it slut shaming, you're defining it from the point of view of the person being shamed. Turn it around and think of someone like Sabrina Tomeo, who doesn't want to walk around with her boobs hanging out of her shirt. What she is doing is calling out attention whoring. These girls are craving attention. And I would really be curious to know how many of them are raised in homes without fathers, where all they desperately want in life is some male attention. And a quick way to get that Excuse is to me. put on a I was raised in a home a without a father from the, the age of 12. And the boys out of this discussion is, is th- this is just incredulous. The idea that boys are just in it for blowjobs. All men want is to sexualize young women. You're denying That's the not true. There are plenty of men out there who don't sexualize boys. young women at all. But I resent, I absolutely resent the implication that by having a single mother, I could somehow have ended up confused about my sexuality. How dare you? Judge, that is so offensive. Sexuality. You have no experience with male attention in any kind of appropriate way. <laughs> I find that really offensive also, and I think that quite often um, the way that we um, 
educate boys the way that we give boys permission. Um, fathers give boys permission to be offensive, to be sexist, to be misogynistic about girls and women um, is exactly the problem of bad fatherhood and actually bad fathering. And I'd far rather be raised by those who recognise that misogyny is damaging in the extreme across society uh, than a father who thinks that it's all right for boys to pay for sex or to call girls sluts. Soraya Shamali for sex, by the way. Uh, your body, your choice. Any woman who wants to decide the cash value of her sexuality has the right to do that. So we're not going to get into prostitute shaming. Well, you just have. <laughs> Sir- Tom, what were you saying? Soraya Shamali, uh, uh, judgy bitch is saying that uh, women, or girls, sorry, uh, who, who dress in a revealing manner may be crying out for attention, but do you think perhaps the slut shamers themselves could also be suffering from low self-esteem and simply envy these girls uh, the confidence they have? Has, I don't think this has anything to do with girls crying out for attention or for them having low self-esteem. I think if we're going to focus on very young children, and we're still, we're talking about 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, they are trying to figure out the world. So they're going to behave in the ways that are reinforced culturally. That's what they're going to do. Are we talking about the sluts or the slut shamers? Well, actually, I'm talking about neither and both, and I'm also talking about boys. So let's just stop using those categories and think about the cultures that they are absolutely steeped in. Okay? So... Slut shaming, which is that act of denigrating girls for the way they well, behave or the way they act. Whores, yeah. Okay. Right. Well, you can use the word attention whores. I'm not using the word attention whores. Oh, slut okay, shaming. Whores not right. Okay. No, no, no. I think you should let me finish since I let you finish. So that behavior falls in a spectrum that includes all kinds of other things, right? It includes street harassment and how men and women and boys and girls learn to function in a society where street harassment is ubiquitous. It includes the fact that every two minutes someone is raped. It doesn't happen in isolation, right? And so the kind of entitlements that go along with identifying a girl as a slut or as a whore, if you would rather use that word, also go with everything else that I've just described. So when a child decides to dress a certain way, it's not because she's consciously said, I want attention. It's because she's looking around her and she's seeing who's getting attention, for example. You can't walk outside 30 feet from your door and not see a half-naked woman who's represented as an object who's cut into six million different pieces for other people's pleasure. And so whether you are the person dressing a certain way or the person criticizing that person or the young boy watching that happen or doing the same thing, doesn't matter. You're all in the same environment. You're listening to The Voice of Russia and we're talking about slut-shaming. With me in the studio are Julie Bindle, co-founder of the group Justice for Women, and Rhiannon Kosselet, editor of Vagenda magazine. And on the phone we have the anti-feminist blogger Judgy Bitch and Soraya Shamali, a feminist writer. Julie Bindle, do you agree that the way you dress does provoke reactions in other people? Of course it does, but nothing provokes a reaction uh, in other people as the way that women dress um, if they choose to define it as sexual but alcohol is the new short skirt you know so when we actually think we fought the battle by saying wherever we dress wherever we go yes means yes and no means no which is an old feminist mantra we then have the kind of booze shaming which is well if you drink a couple of alco pops who can be surprised when you're raped and yet I hear time and time again of groups of of young men in schools and colleges who are coercing and threatening and blackmailing girls into giving them blowjobs in public places. And those boys are not shamed. So where's the shaming for those boys? We've just seen recently a trial of a number of men uh, in Oxford in the UK where they have prostituted, raped, abused, humiliated and sadistically harmed groups of girls between the ages of 11 and 16. Where Where's the shaming in the men who do that and who are never caught? And the idea that you can actually define a girl as a slut because she is in any way sexual is absolutely abhorrent. And quite frankly, you know, I think it's just the the foot soldiers for patriarchy, you know, our, our, our judgy bitch. 
um, colleague here who it should be ashamed of herself is furthering male supremacy way beyond many men, many Ju- decent men. Judgy bitch, it's true, isn't it? We are only, you know, cult- society shames girls, but it doesn't shame men. Surely that's problematic. Well, I don't think that's true at all. In fact, I don't know oh, what, my what goodness. century you're living in, but a boy who runs around chasing every skirt is, is not considered a stud anymore. I mean, that's a really no, 1970s a kind of thing. Boys what, can be called a player. Let's too. let Judgy Bidge finish. I think What's a player? Someone who's never going to have a serious girlfriend. I think, He's off um, the list. I, I mean, there's, it's, it's not... Part of this whole idea that boys are somehow animals, they're subhuman. They don't belong in this debate as loving, caring, emotionally responsive people. They're always the anyone said that. And girls are always the victims. And you're talking about people steeped in a culture where they pick up messages. That's a big message they pick up. That boys are dangerous and ugly and stupid and brutish and Judge crude. Bitch, why you is the word pimp so positive? Why is the word pimp a positive word? And every word to do with girls' sexuality and female sexuality is negative. Uh, well, I don't think it is. Pimp is not a positive. Oh, oh yes, it is. Listen to any hip hop song. Listen, okay, well, we agree. Have there you are heard pro- about the Sturbanville rape case that's going on in your country. I just, how can you not? How can you deny the fact that men? who are promiscu- promiscuous sexually are still still praised whilst women are denigrated. It's there. It's all over the internet. It's in the newspapers. And just to echo what Soraya was saying earlier, you know, you're talking about choice, but actually if there's a predominant culture giving you a constant message that this is how you should be, that's not really a choice. It's the illusion of a choice. Can well, I so add if something? You li- if you live in a culture that where... where Women get on radio shows, panelists, and talk about how boys are, you know, disgusting, crude rapists. They're not crude. I think you're the only man that said that, that, by the way. Patriarchy. Yeah, that is. Um, Can I say something? Yes, Soraya Shamali, please come in. What I am saying is that the same culture that produces slut shaming and victim blaming is the culture that identifies men and boys as base and animalistic. They go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. So I don't think boys and men are born to rape. I think we live in a culture that entitles boys and men to act in certain ways. And Steubenville is the prime example of that right now in our country. Because for a young girl, whether she is drunk or drugged, to be dragged from party to party where up to 50 other girls and boys saw this happen, to be raped, to be urinated on, that, that entire dynamic has nothing to do with slut-shaming by itself. It has to do with the entitlement they felt to do that. It has to do with the fact that none of the other children stopped it. It has to do with the fact that the girl is being blamed for their behavior, which means that she is somehow in control of the situation and has power, which is clearly not the case. I mean, if if feminism feminism is to work and be effective, it means that we accept that we're all born as babies, neither good or bad, and it's socialisation that gives permission uh, as Soraya said, to to act out power in, in a horrific way. Judgy Bitch, surely there are better ways to try to uh, improve society than uh, encourage young girls to uh, criticise other young girls on the internet. Probably. I mean, the number one way would be to have adults governing their own children, having adults involved in the lives of their children. I mean, recently in the Daily Mail, Shona Sibri, is that her name? Her daughter got dressed up in these gold hoochie pants and a see-through shirt, and she knew, she knew absolutely what was going to yeah, happen her mother, if that girl went out to a slut disco. in a national she newspaper. The counter and she is that a solution? And she is threw that a solution? Under the bus. I want Judge a bitch to answer, you know, what I mean, is it really a good thing to have this kind of culture of humiliation going on? Absolutely. I think it's a great thing. I think people like uh, Sabrina Tomeo are doing a real service to all the rest of the girls around them who do not want to live in this culture where you have grown women, some of the mothers of teenage daughters, saying that women's sexuality applies to 13-year-olds. No, it doesn't. 13-year-olds should not be walking down the street in push-up bras and miniskirts. They don't understand what message they're communicating. Your clothing oh, I they understand the gives you choices. I mean, you would never put your daughter in downtown Bangkok dressed as a tourist with all her valuables in a backpack. You would encourage her to take some reasonable precautions to protect herself in that situation. What you wear 
sends a signal. It sends a message. Soraya, Soraya Shamali, you're 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 a mother. Have you ever had a discussion with your daughters, if you have them, about what they wear and whether or not Listen, it could have consequences? The discussion that we have is pretty much the discussion we're having right now. Okay, my children have grown up in an environment that is openly feminist, openly critical of misogyny. And so if, I, if my husband and I haven't done our job by the time they are dressing themselves, which they are now as teenagers, then we're not going to be able to affect any, any meaningful change now, okay? The, the issue with focusing, as this meme focuses on individual girls, is that it's a distraction, right? Like victim blaming, it enables us as a society to step away from the systemic problems we have. We don't look at institutions. We don't look at systems when we focus on how, you know, some individual 13-year-old girl chooses to dress on any given day. It is, it is beyond absurd to suggest that the function served by slut shamers is good for other girls. It is the enforcement of a double standard that perpetuates male dominance Rhiannon Costler, do you want to come in? I, I just think I can't believe that Judgy Bitch has said that humiliation is a good thing when she knows that girls have killed themselves over this. You know, teenage girls have committed suicide because of the way they've been bullied. And the other thing is, of course, that even if girls aren't in any way sexual, that they're not having sex at all. They're called lesbians and they're called prudes and they are, they are bullied in exactly the same way because girls' and women's sexuality is policed by men who know that it keeps control over us. Judgy bitch, what? suicide, that's terrible. Yeah. It is terrible, uh, but I think you're confusing causation with correlation here. I mean, when people have colds, there's lots of tissues around, but tissues don't cause colds. The fact is, is that the majority of young people are involved in social media right now. And suicide rates, as a matter of fact, have been plummeting rather dramatically amongst boys. There's a very slight uptick amongst girls, but in general, this is some, this, you're, you're talking about outliers. You're, you're arguing from the extreme. The vast majority so of children are not damage, going to commit they, suicide, and if they do, it really has nothing to do with social media. I just want to finish by asking all of our guests very quickly to say whether they think uh, the trend of slut-shaming is going to increase or whether it's going to die away. Uh, Julie Bindle. Until we have equality between men and women and until we have a recognition that this is sexual violence and sexual abuse, then this will continue. It's age-old. Rhiannon Coslet. All I can say is that the contact I've had with teenage girls does give me hope. They are thinking about these issues in a much more intelligent way than judgy bitches, I must say. Um, so that does give me hope for the future. Saraya Shamali, what do you think about the direction this trend is taking? Well, I, I agree with Julie. I don't, I, I don't really think it's a trend. I think that the social media amplifies the harm that can be done. Um, but yes, until we have parity in culture, until we have economic and political parity, um, I don't think that it'll change much. And Judgy Bitch, what about you? What do you think? Well, I hope it continues because I think it's a good thing. And until we have a culture where young girls are taught that they have some responsibility for their own protection, that they do in fact have agency, that they're not simple dupes in a system called patriarchy, until we have young women understanding that they have personal responsibility, you're going to continue to see those girls who get it, calling out the girls who don't. Now I'd, like, I'd like to thank my guests, Julie Bindle, a freelance journalist and co-founder of the group Justice for Women, Rhiannon Coslett, co-founder and editor of Vagenda magazine, anti-feminist blogger Judgy Bitch, and feminist writer and media critic Soraya Shamali.